Jesus performs this gracious, this merciful service of inviting tired, frustrated night workers to breakfast. They'd be fishing. They'd prove to be rubbish at it. They're not happy about that. And it was the carpenter who would resolve their <clears throat> professional deficit. The rubbish at your job. And it would have been easy for him to have said, there's your fish, your failed fisherman, your muppets, now go and cook, cook a few of those fish for your own breakfast. But he says, come and have breakfast with me. Come and have breakfast with me. His nature is to draw needy people to himself. Frustrated, hungry, cold, wet, tired. Come and have breakfast with me. That's the saviour we're following, and that's the way he wants his kingdom taken forward. Feeding sheep. It's a very different process from catching fish. Follow that model, and he makes you fishers of men, because the end result is fishing boat. So here's the model demonstrated, verses 9 to 14, and then the model taught to Peter, verses 15 to 19. Maybe Peter in particular, because he's the most driven type A personality amongst them, the least likely to get this message unless he sees it and hears all of this. I hear regularly now keen young men in pioneering ministries talking about that they use such military metaphors for what they do. And Jesus is saying, look, the process goes like this, let's go feed some sheep. Perhaps, perhaps I'm one of that elite band who had the privilege of feeding, you know, four-legged sheep before I get to preach about this this morning. Trust me, when we go out with a net, fish try to avoid us. When you walk into a field this morning with a bag of feed, sheep flock to you. Let's look then at the model that Jesus offers for getting folks into fellowship with himself. He feeds these fatigued followers. That's three F's in one sentence. Did you spot that? He feeds his fatigued followers. He firstly addresses their failure, their shortages and their frustration. He provides them with fish. And then he encourages their heart with a fire and fellowship and an invitation to breakfast. And those are the two points in my sermon. Firstly, feeding the fatigued followers. He has a fireside. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Mm -hmm. Come to breakfast. Here's a fire. Come and get warm. Come and get dry. Here was a source of comfort to, to bring the rigours of the night and the cold, the wet they'd been experiencing to a close. Don't forget, they'd been out in the environment on the lake all night. They'd been on an open boat all night on a lake. And they just got wet pulling in nets, because you can't pull in nets without getting wet. I learned that when I was a little lad, you know, helping them tie me, the, the, the tidy estuary salmon fishermen with their nets, right? You couldn't, I'd come over and say, you're soaking wet! Yeah, I'm soaking wet, I've been pulling in nets. If you pull in nets, you get wet. And they've been out there in the night, in the cold, in the wet. And Peter, he's just completely wet through, because as soon as he recognised the Lord, Peter put his warm, dry overcoat on and jumped into the lake to be with the Lord. Remember that bit? Yeah. I've often thought about this on cold, hard days on the, on the mart or on a, on a stand somewhere with something for the church or whatever. I often thought, here I'm standing there giving out literature, and they, they don't want literature. What they want is a warm. And perhaps the best way to draw a crowd for our open air might be to set up an old drum and light a fire. Jesus has lit a fire on the beach. He's looking after people. It's the prerequisite of drawing together his flock. Here's a fire. Now we think of fire from the pulpit, there's fire and brimstone preaching, don't we? And we're back to nets there. <laughs> That's not the sort of ministry Christ is modelling here. He's warming their bodies with his fire before warming their hearts with his fellowship. And that's the way it works. How do you feel when you come in from the cold and you've had a good warm? How do you feel when you come into this building in the winter and it's cold, you're just 
burst it, you hear the sermon, aren't you? You're not. Jesus says, here's the fire. And it's the prerequisite to feeding their souls. Worked hard all night. Got nothing for their efforts. Tough night after a traumatic few weeks. Jesus is doing their bodies and their hearts good by giving them breakfast. Use fish, use fresh fish. Pleasing to the senses, nourishing the body around the fire on the beach. Now that the sun's come up. They can't listen to his teaching when their bodies are cold and their tummies are rumbling. Incidentally, we don't, you know, so often when food is distributed to the needy and whatever, they, they have to listen to the sermon first. You only get the food if you listen to the sermon. There's something wrong with the sermon then, isn't there? Jesus feeds the body and then he feeds their souls. First he takes care of their need of comfort and nutrition, then that leads him into deeper fellowship with himself. See, fireside, fish, fellowship. 